Podcast. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today I have two extra special guests on to talk about service monitors, but it's it's going to dip into spectrum analyzers. We're going to be talking about uh, possibly some vector network analyzers and some oscilloscope stuff as well. But we're going to cover what a service monitor is, why you might wa- want one, and then you know what should you look out for if you're thinking about buying used. This is a live show, so make sure you're in the chats, leaving messages and comments. Do a at Ham Radio Crash Course, or just put the word question in your question, and we'll do our best to get them as we're going through the show. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the memes. We'll get started real soon. How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Saturday show for the Ham Radio Crash Course. This is where we do an hour-long topic, basically covering some part of amateur radio. And uh, this is a, a somewhat of a, a special thing, kind of almost like a favorite of myself. I need to understand way more about service monitors, spectrum analyzers, and all that. And I know the two folks that we've got on the show today are definitely experienced, at least uh, they make a lot of videos on it, and they're always really, really uh, valuable and educational every time I watch it. So I've got the Smokin' Ape and Ham Radio DX on tonight, which is super cool because um, I've never, I don't think I've ever had the Smokin' Ape on like a topic show. We've had the free-for-alls with everybody after we do some kind of event or something like that, but this is the first time we're having him on the show to really kind of share his wisdom, so I'm super excited about that. So yeah, thanks everybody for being in there. We're already getting uh, comments. Bring out the ape, bring out the ape, bring out the ape. He's coming soon. Hang tight, hang tight. All right, so let's uh, do a quick shout-out to the merch store ran by my wife, hamtactical.com. Get yourself a beer koozie for the Ham Radio Adventures We 4 DX team. It actually goes to support that club, by the way. Uh, or, you know, caution, radioactive. Always be radioactive if you're an amateur radio operator, right? And another shout out to our friend Dennis over at Denco 86DM. He's making batteries. Finally, we're super excited about that. If you remember, uh, he came on to do a battery build and I, I literally through his tutelage was doing spot welding and all that fun stuff to build a you know it's a collab battery but basically it's got denco guts in it in the battery and it came out really really good so i was i was happy about that so go check him out link is in the chat there so big shout out to my friend hayden he's been on before a couple of times one of my favorite live streams was on sporadic e and some of the fun things you can do with the higher frequencies kind of radio to get much longer distance contact. So make sure to go check that out. Also, he's just had a spate of videos going after some of these handhelds uh, that we're all getting thrown at us to talk about. And, and honestly, that's a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. Spurious emissions, why you might want to look into that. Is it really that important? You know, that kind of stuff. So it should be really fun. Links for my friends here that are on the show are, is all in the description. So make sure you click on those. Make sure you subscribe. Hayden can use the love and and so can the smoking ape. And yes, sir, obviously you can see already he's got some test equipment there on his uh, his table. It looks like he was looking at the nano VNA. He talks a lot about antennas here. He's working with an LC network matching device or yes, an LC network device using the nano VNA. So make sure you go subscribe to all these good folks. I am trying to speed right through the intro so we can get to this fun topic. We've got a number of questions here, at least things we want to hit, but we want to make sure we hear from you too. So make sure you're asked your questions as we're going on. So let's bring the, let's bring the team on here. Hello. We're, we're calling you Mr. Ape today, but the smoking apes here. How you doing? <laughs> oh, you're muted. I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me on, Josh. And uh, I said, how is everybody? Very good. Well, thank you. A- anything you want to mention right up front? Uh, something fun you might be working on or let the kids no, nothing, know what you're up to? Nothing exciting. You said share wisdom. I, I hope I don't disappoint. We'll see, we'll see how it uh, how it goes. But uh, um, uh, not just, just normal stuff. Just having fun in the shack. Well, thank you for being on. The way I always look at wisdom is if you got more than I do on a topic, I want to hear it. I'm not looking for the best. I'm looking to get my feet moving forward. And so <laughs> if you help me do that, that's all that matters to me. And then next to him, we got Hayden, Ham Radio DX. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? How are you? Hello, Mr. Ape. 
Good to have Mr. you on. Ain't hey, nobody. <laughs> yeah, You're looking, yeah, good. You got a good background there today, Hayden. Very uh, streamer esque. Look at that. He's ready uh, for. It's just he read the book. Just, it's just book. a collection of rubbish, really, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's the lighting is what does it. It's really the oh, lighting. Okay. That's what pulls the whole room together. <laughs> what do they say? If you've uh, got a busy workbench, it's a sign of productivity, right? So that's what it is. When is it a busy workbench, a uh, a clean mind or a clear mind? Is that something along those lines? <laughs> yeah, something like that. It, well, it, is a, yeah. it is a mess but here, so I've got the uh, screen, green screen going because uh, it, it's not as orderly as Hayden's. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, James is commenting, the sign is still blinking. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about yeah. that beforehand. Yeah, it's got a problem. I need to fix it. <laughs> and uh, no, Matt, I was not saying to Mr. Ape here, I'm not looking for the best, and that's why you're here. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do, and certainly most of the people watching. And so that's why we're here. So, fellas, we'll start it off easy. I mentioned service monitor in the name, but please explain like what is a service monitor right let's just explain what it is first off so Abe, maybe you kick things off and we'll let hayden yeah that's fine <laughs> so um when we talk a little bit about rf equipment or working with rf uh there's instruments right like a, a spectrum analyzer oscilloscope signal generator and, and you can get like lab grade you can get uh prosumer grade or hobbyist grade stuff and um the spectrum's all over the space but they're they're devices that give you a lot of features and functionality so you can do a lot of different things um when you start to look at like a station monitor the job of a station monitor really is to be in line between your radio and your transmission line and tell you like a dashboard, what's going on with your environment, what's happening. And um, if you want to do testing and stuff like that, sometimes the instruments are a little bit better way to go um, than the station monitor because the station monitor is usually hardwired hard in and it's difficult to unwire or not. And um, they used to be more popular a little bit back in the olden days when ham radio was in black and white because- <laughs> uh, That's what we saw in black and white too, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, is that people would want to extend their their station, and we didn't have things like like uh, pan adapters, band scopes, like the seventy three hundred, for example, has the audio scope that you can look at. That stuff didn't exist, and people wanted to be able to see that stuff. So, Yesu, I, I'm just familiar with Yesu and Kenwood. I don't know. I'm sure I had them at, at one point, uh, but people would buy these these station monitors to kind of bridge that gap. And then you have things that are called like a uh, a test set or a uh, or, an, or um, there, there's another name for it. I'm trying to blank real quick. Service monitor. But um, they're really they they yeah they were made for like the RF stations for like cell phone towers and stuff like that. They're really purpose built for doing a number of tests. And like you'll see them that um, that do like a Synad test or they'll do SWR power. Obviously that's, a, that's, that's an easy one, but then you'll be able to look at the spectrum analyzer and look at your signal quality and stuff like that. So they're more specialized, but because we're hands, we can adapt them and, and do a lot more measurements and stuff. Really quick, uh, just for everybody that doesn't know. But, um, there are still station monitors being made now. So question, uh, you, you mentioned oh, sinoid no. test or sinoid testing. Could you explain really quickly just, uh, what what is that so for people that don't know people know power readings and swr yeah. but they might not know what that term is yeah so synad is a signal and um and uh dist and distortion test right so you would use that for like um your receiver you see it more in fm mm -hmm. but really what it is is how many dbs going into your antenna port to get 12 db audio out on your speaker and so you'll see a lot of radios will be like, look at our radio. It's a hundred negative 140 dB for Synad. And you have no idea if that's good or not. Even if you get up to a meter, you have to compare it to another radio to see how good the front end is on it. Right. Okay. So Hayden, you want to add to that? What is a service monitor? Anything that Ape did a fantastic job, but what would you add there? Yeah, well, mine sort of comes from a bit of a repeater background, which covers all of that stuff. Mainly that's FM as well. So I've got a um a test set service monitor. And again, it was an X cell phone um, system uh, unit. So I got it quite cheap, but it's got all the analog functionality in it. So you can do things um, such as, you know, as Ape said, you can look at receivers or radios, transmitters. But then when you start to get into other things such as filters, you to 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 sort of tune sort of duplexes and filters, you need a, 
a tracking generator. So my set had one of those in it. And we'll cover all of these terminologies and stuff later on. But we will. Um, or call yeah. us out if we don't. Call us out. Yeah. <laughs> so like you can get today, you can get the, the the like the tiny SAs and you can get little RF generators and you can kind of you can kind of cobble something together. Um, but these units are that well, the pr- unit that I primarily use has this all built in into one set. So mm. um, it's like a complete, um, well, not a complete, but it's it's got a lot of functions that you would normally use for that kind of stuff. Gotcha. And there was a comment in there regarding the, some of this just test equipment. That stuff costs real radio money. So yes, a lot of this does, but we're going to talk about some options that you have to keep this under you know, the, the don't tell the wife level, right? Kind of <laughs> level that we're, we always try to, to fly. We, we want to brush close to that radar signature, but not not fully bust through the, the stratosphere. There are options, right? And so we'll be talking about that. I hadn't heard that term real radio money. Like I'm familiar with good money, bad money, blood money, drug money, all that stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, good radio money is a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so why would... So explain, and some of this I appreciate for a lot of you watching is going to be like, oh, I know what an antenna analyzer is. I have a nano VNA, right? That's kind of like your first dip in the toe in some of this test equipment. So for everybody here, and we'll go to Hayden uh, to drop this first one. Why would a ham want something like a service monitor or in your example, some kind of cobbled together mishmash of different types of tools? Yeah, so um, I guess that, well, the first thing for me was is that I didn't want several different pieces of equipment and then have to cobble them all together to try and make something work. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted something that would do everything that I needed, which was build repeaters and um, maintain them and then also tune them as well. And that's what I ended up purchasing my service monitor for. Um, But there might be some cases where you don't want to, um, you, you know, you don't need all of that functionality. You might just want um, say a, a simple spectrum analyzer, which the tiny SA would 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 be a good choice for you, or you might just want an RF signal generator, which you know <laughs> you can you can get away with a a Baofeng as a cheap uh, RF signal generator at some of the high frequencies. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's I guess it's uh, it, it depends on what what you want to do. Um, as I mentioned before, like some of us uh, we like to. Um, you know, build circuits or build things. So we need this test equipment to be able to tune it and to make sure that it's working correctly. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where, you yeah, you do need to weigh up the cost of how much you're going to use it. I use it all the time, uh, but, you know, you might, not, uh, you might not need it in your station. And what we've been doing lately, you mentioned earlier with the, um, with the HTs, we've been doing some, um, some spurious emission tests with those. And uh, something like a tiny SA would be fine for that kind of thing. So, and in fact, I think Ape and, and I think yourself, Josh, you use that in one of in some of your videos. So, um, so yeah, there's there's many different reasons, um, but uh, you got to yeah, I guess watch the watch the budget and decide what you want to use for it. Yeah, Ape, why don't you hit that? Anything? I mean, add to that? Why would a ham want something like this, or or a bunch of these things? Like, what what value is it? Well, so there, there's a there's a few different reasons, and it a at a base level for me, it's because I like to know how everything works. And so I like, I like to be able to dig in and you can't, you need the tools to be able to, to see that. But a lot of people are like, Hey, I just want to buy a radio and I want to buy an antenna and I want to go get out on the air and make contacts. And that's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, the first thing you start with is analyzing your antenna and you have a ton of people who say stuff like, Oh, it's all about the antenna, get a good antenna and, and you're gold. Well, that's not necessarily true. I mean, because you, if you're using filtering or if you're using bad coax or any of that kind of stuff, you want to check that. But you also want to check out the output of your radio, right? To make sure that you have a clean signal, making it to your antenna so you're not broadcasting distortion. Um, so, uh, you know, what I tell people is like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, if you just take a little bit of time to QA your system and set up, make sure it's good, it's, you know, got a clean bill of health, you're, you'll you'll do better than you would if you didn't. Yeah, well said. And and really fast, just for everybody watching, I, I do have my overhead shot. So this is the tiny SA. It's it's kind of like the the, P, the nano VNA, right? It's the same look and feel, but that's a spectrum analyzer. And so I use that for testing the handhelds like I did in the last video with the, what is this, the talk? I've been calling it the talk box, but it's the talk pod, right? <laughs> um, so 
the the other thing that actually you can use them for is looking for spurious emissions. So if you had like <laughs> a, a radio device that was creating a lot of RF and causing all kinds of problem in and around your shack, you can actually use that for that. You can actually hook an antenna up to that bad boy and you'll see it kind of like a waterfall um, that we would use on a modern radio, right? Wouldn't you guys say? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's exactly what it is. So when we were talking about those old uh, station monitors back in the old days, what they were really doing is, is they were put, throwing a spectrum analyzer, just a small, not not like a real big grand spectrum analyzer, but they're just throwing that on the IF stage. And when you transmit, you would be able to see your signal, but you would also be able to see adjacent signals or signal close to where you were listening in your passband. And so those folks would be able to tune around a little bit and, and potentially make it make a contact that they wouldn't if they didn't see that on their on their scope but it's the exact same technology actually even on your tiny sa there's a waterfall capability oh that uh yeah that you can turn on and you can you can see it so you know it looks like a modern rig oh i didn't know that i'm gonna have to try that out my, my version might be really old i probably need to do a firmware upgrade on it well when, when, when they first came out i ordered one and uh i was just like man i don't have any idea how to use this i remember you got one and did the tr you put it in a trash can or something like that to measure was that did you yes did, i i did, uh for okay. uh i was using that for attenuation of my emp trash can you're totally right yeah because it comes with a little telescopic yeah. antenna yes that was the reason yeah. i bought it actually is because it ran without having a power supply like outside right. the can, I needed it all in the can. And then you could do like max hold of your trace and stuff like that, right? So you, yes. could, see, you could go in there and see, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I got it because I wanted to measure, I had a pile of Balfangs, right? And I wanted to see which ones were clean and which ones weren't. I gotta tell you, man, it's a heartbreaker because sometimes you you know you run the test and then uh, it comes back and your your favorite radio is no, no longer uh, fit for use. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, we should probably talk about it at the end, like how how important is this whole spectrum purity thing that kind of is the rage right now. Everybody's starting to make videos on it because we're getting all these you know radios, yeah. these Chinese radios, and this topic comes up a lot. You know the ARRL. You probably saw them at both of you at Hamvention. You know their little booth where they'll test your radio for you and they'll give you a little sticker if it's certified approved kind of thing <laughs> um, well they'll tell you though but this is this, you have to test this on your own this this test doesn't really count <laughs> because right yeah you know you, anything could go wrong in a test that's a good point too we'll, we'll probably talk about calibration a little bit later yeah. but uh hayden do you want to hop over to your slides maybe this might be a good time to splash that in i don't know if we've covered some of those bullets but if you want to do that that might be fun yep i'll um i'll just start it up and hide that for you yeah, so with uh, with what I've got here is we, a lot of this we did cover very briefly, but it's kind of one of those things is I've broken it broken it down into what's essential, nice to have, and when you're starting to get very serious. So um, you've got we've got test equipment for hams. There's a picture of that tiny SA. I don't have one of those yet, but I want to uh, to get one of those. I've spectrum analyzers are one of the more, more important I think uh, pieces of equipment that you can have because you can use them all over the place and it's good to be able to see what's around you and um, you know that if the spectrum's clean as well if you're getting interfered with you might be able to find a, a nearby transmitter that you didn't know about mm -hmm. but I've got essential SWR antenalizer most of us have those we kind of need them to tune our antennas and make sure our SWR is fine some of them are in radios already um, nice to have VNA and the tiny SA. So they're the sort of the mid range, um, uh, for hobbyists, which, you know, they don't really break the budget, but they're a good little piece of test equipment. And then when you start to get serious, the big spectrum analyzers and the RF generators and the service monitors type stuff, which, which is what we'll go into. And, um, basically my equipment is th these are my SWR analyzers. I've just got the rig expert stick 500 and the MFJ 259. Um, so that allows me to measure stuff such as SWR, return loss, Stick 500, length. I want to give a big shout out to the Stick 500. That's like one of the perfect balances in dollars to band coverage that they've made in yeah. a long time. That's like the perfect sweet spot. The banana yellow color is great too because you can't lose it in the field. <laughs> well, see, I bought that one because, uh, well, see, I bought that at Hamvention because I went to Gigaparts, to the Gigaparts booth, and they gave me the case. So I figured, well, I need a rig expert to go mm. with it, right? Um, That's right. And then- what what's the model previous? I think it's uh, the two hundred and fifty. The two hundred and fifty, and I thought, well, I kind of want UHF as well, so that's where the five hundred comes yep. in. Um, so I got the five hundred. I haven't even got it out of the box yet, though. But don't tell anyone that. Um, that's a that's a video coming up. Um, so yeah, you can measure all the all of those things, and you can use them as a I call it a dirty RF generator. It's not really it's it's a it's a basic RF generator because you can basically tune them to a frequency and 
the MFJ especially, you can then check to make sure your receiver's receiving. You'll hear like a warbly sound or something like that. So, you know, um, it's good for that. Then I've got something like this. This is a, a – I was talking to Ape actually about this the other day. Um, this is a signal generator which goes from 35 megahertz up to 4 gigs. And it's oh, actually wow. got a – it's actually got a little um, RF detector input as well, so you can do basic sweeps. So, so you can see there, there's a sweep of a of a filter um, on that screenshot. Um, and of course, you have to use attenuators and everything because there's only a maximum amount of out, um, input power that you can put into these things. But I bought this because uh, I didn't have any test equipment that would go above one gigahertz. So, and I wanted to go up to three point four gigs. So I, I I ended up purchasing this. Um, and you know, that's, I still use it for occasional things. Um, it's got heaps of different functions, but, um, but yeah, that's a, that's 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 sweet. And and both of you, if you've got a signal generator, can you explain why you might want something like that? Why, why would you, why do you use that Hayden or when have you used it? Yeah. So, so, uh, two, two things I mainly use it for is for testing receivers. So you can basically pump in a frequency. So you can see in the top right hand corner, I've got two point four or two four four zero megahertz so i can pump that frequency out and i can tune my transverters systems my microwave transverter systems to that frequency and make sure that they're receiving correctly because mm-hmm. uh, you'll hear a um you'll hear a, a carrier or you can also generate a tone and do all that sort of stuff uh and then the other thing that it also does is because it's got that rf detector input think of that as an antenna input on your on your tiny sa um, I can't remember what the second input's called exactly. I probably knows. Um, the tiny SA has a high and a low port. Yeah. So one of them will generate a signal as well. But the tiny SA Ultra, I'm just telling everybody, get the tiny SA Ultra. It's it's well, well worth the extra 50 bucks. Yeah. So basically what you do is is if you're out, if you output a signal out of the RF out and through, say, a filter or through a directional coupler, which is a device which you can measure to use um, how much power is being reflected back. And then you input that into the RF detector input and you get those sweeps and you can tune antennas, you can tune um, uh, filters and all that sort of stuff. So that's what that's what I use that for. Okay. Yeah, so when I built the... Um... I built an antenna, I was calling the Shorty 40, and it's an NFED half wave for 40 meters that's only 40 feet long as opposed to 62, 63 feet um, because I put an induction coil towards the end of that. And what I needed to do is I needed to measure the inductance of the coil to make sure I had the right frequency response to cut off 20 meters from going past that. And um, I did exactly what Hayden's saying, I, using a, a signal input and then measuring the output through the filter on a device was able to tell me if it was tuned in or not. And and that sweep that you can see there on the chart that will um, be constant. And what you can do is you can make little adjustments, perhaps like um, Ape said with the coil, take some turns off, add some inductance, put some turns on, and then you can see the sweeps and see how it changes, and then tune it in for the frequency that you want. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then going on to my next piece of equipment, this is like the shining knight of my test equipment uh, <laughs> arsenal. Uh, this is my service monitor, which goes up to a gigs. Uh, this is an HP eight nine two four, and with this, this is the this is the the serious stuff. Um, I can measure transmit power input. It's got an RF generator. It's got a spectrum analyzer. It's got that tracking generator. Measures SWR with a directional coupler, AM, FM, SSB, demodulation. It's got an oscilloscope. It's got an audio frequency generator, and you can also measure FM deviation with it. Um, you didn't so, mention the 3.5 floppy drive on there. Oh uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, no, it's it's not a 3.5 floppy actually. That's a that's a that's actually uh, I think that's a it is a memory card, but it's not a 3.5. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those it's, older it's, ones do have the three fives on them. Yeah. It's just funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. So obviously this is a few years old, but I got mine in 2012, and it was seven hundred dollars from Israel of all places. And it costs three hundred dollars to get here, which actually I thought was pretty good for a thousand dollars. It was an ex CDMA cell network. If you remember the old CDMA cell network, um, what that was is it had all the digital functions in it, uh, but they weren't of any use anymore to them in the cell phone network. So uh, because CDMA was being switched off, so what they did was they sold these, but they all had all the analog functions in them, which we as hams use which is perfect. So I ended up purchasing one of these. And the only problem is 
weighs 59 pounds. Weighs a, <laughs> it's really heavy. <laughs> that said, I have carried it to every repeater site and I want to upgrade to a HP 8920B, which is a smaller version of this. So if anyone has one and they would like to sell it uh, cheaply enough, let me know because I'm after one. I hope you mean um, carry in a vehicle and then just the last no, couple of feet no, to the repeater phys- site. Well, yeah. You just hike it on that. your back the whole way. <laughs> well, Throw it no, in the ute but, yeah. and get on going. I don't have a ute. But <laughs> the last, uh, yeah, it would be handy if I did. Um, no, yeah, chuck it in the car and uh, and carry it for the last few feet. That's right. Um, and you can see the, we'll, we'll fire it up for a practical demo if we have time later. But you can see two different measurements there. One is on the left. It shows you the frequency, the, the output power, the deviation, um, and you can measure all sorts of things. And then on the right-hand side, this is actually SWR, um, return loss. Um, sorry, return loss of a six meter antenna. And you can see this number minus 29. You've, you can use an online calculator to calculate that to SWR. Ah. So, um, so you could so, yeah, almost get away without having a uh, nano VNA necessarily if you go straight for a spectrum analyzer, for instance, along those lines. Yeah, well, um, funny you mentioned that. I'll just stop sharing because while we were just, uh, you know, talking there, I, I I haven't had a look for a little while to see how much they are. And of all of the places, eBay is probably the place that you'll find those kind of things. Or uh, yes, you got you got to be careful with it, um, or you'll find uh, a, a communications business might be selling theirs because they're upgrading or something like that. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but yeah, I I saw a couple on here on um, on eBay that they're about six seven hundred dollars. So um, you might might possibly find a bargain. So well, we'll definitely get into the cost. I think that's going to be the next thing to talk about. But yeah. I'll just say right up front, uh, I hadn't actually looked up the the tiny SA Ultra, so I just did right now, and I, I dropped the link for it. That's a, a way higher frequency than the tiny SA standard, right? That goes it's up so, like it's, five I don't gigs. Even... Yeah, I don't even. Um, yeah, I don't even use my tiny SAs any the reg standards. I have two of those, and I have two of the ultras, um, and I, I just use the ultras. And somebody in chat was mentioned in the this particular oh. device is the SV forty four one A, and it's a big old nano VNA, Ooh. Um, seven inch screen. It's awesome. I, I love it. I use it so much that the battery is dead in it, so I can't turn it on. <laughs> I picked it up, but I I constantly do that because it it times out, and then I'll forget to turn it off, and then. What does the ultra go up to? What frequency? I want to say it goes gig. up to six point three or five nine, some something yeah. higher than I use. Well, thanks yeah. guys, I found my next purchase. Yeah, but, that. What, <laughs> yeah. What's really nice about the tiny SA and the tiny SA Ultra is is that it also has a signal generator, and you can do FM and AM demodulation or modulation on it. Um. So you can so I've used it to inject like a one four six five two signal into an HT, and then just continually turn down the decibel level until I got to a point where the radio couldn't hear anymore, you know, because I wanted to see how low of a signal it would be able to pick up. It's kind of like a cyanide measurement, but yeah. not exactly. Yeah. So, uh, perfect, perfect. So th- this was something you know when when I got access to the nine oh five, the ICOM nine oh five, and I went up to Crestline, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the gentleman there had the test equipment that would go up to 10 gigs, right? For most people, they don't need that. But that test I found really, really cool because that's literally testing the receiver of your radio, right? Like you're testing out mm-hmm. how, how sensitive it is. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. And so like it, it helps you tune in your squelch and so you'll be able to block things. Out. So I think it's like negative 94, if I remember correctly. DB is uh, an S9 signal in FM on an HT. Um, so you can hit that. And that, I think with my... um. With my uh, 70D from Yesu, I was actually able to go down to 141 dB before I couldn't hear the tone oh, wow. anymore, and that's that's pretty deep in the weeds. That's, that's real like deep. A, yeah, it's like an S1 an yeah. S1 signal. Um, so it's a good way to test that, and then you can also play that sound on an adjacent signal, and then just turn your radio over. So like when you talk about channelization, it's usually around 20 kilohertz. Um, you can turn o- you can turn over the other one and see if you could still hear the signal. And uh, I was able on my Baofeng, no surprise, able to hear signals pretty far away that uh you, you were like dang um so that's that's all interference adding to your noise floor when you're when you're trying to you know check into the local traffic net right the the, the, the bow things are actually interesting because they do receive quite a fair way down as I they said, do the, yeah uh but then they compromise selectivity so um they 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 get swamped by other signals on you know if you've got other transmitters nearby 
but uh, sure yeah, I th- yeah, on our on yeah, I think a, a normal twelve dB cyanide signal is usually around a hun- minus one hundred and twenty, minus one hundred and twenty five, something like that. Yeah. Is a good is a good uh, measurement. So we kind yeah, of and hit- you you will even see radios that don't even list it, right? Like I was right. looking at uh, an HT manual the other day. It was the 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 Waxon we were talking about earlier. They don't even list the cyanide measurement. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why they just don't. So you could you could you'd have to test it if you're really nerdy about it. So we've kind of listed talked about three tools, if you will, and and we we're wrapping them under service monitor. But so spectrum analyzer, signal generator, and vector network analyzer. So two of those things, two two devices basically can can do all of that. I would call it at the at the hobbyist level, right? So the nano VNA and the the tiny SA, tiny SA can do frequency generation. Um, which is incredibly handy because you can be like out the door for under two hundred dollars if you just go with the small versions. The problem, though, and then I'll let uh, Hayden definitely knows all about this, but but eight, feel free to dive in. When you start going higher in frequency, you know, for a lot of hams, we kind of top out at seventy centimeters. That's like our high <laughs> frequency. But when you start going into like the multiples of gigs, right? That's when the cost of this stuff starts to shoot up astronomically, right? Oh yeah, it's much harder to to do, and it's much it's much more expensive equipment. So, like, if you just look at an oscilloscope, you can get for two hundred two hundred fifty bucks, you can get an oscilloscope that goes up to ten, twenty five, fifty megahertz in bandwidth. Right. But if you start looking at like a gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope, you're looking at like fifteen hundred two thousand new. These are new prices, yeah. like a, like a Siglin or like a Regal. Mm. And 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 that's why that's the very reason why too why I bought this RF generator was because it went up to four point four gigs. I didn't have anything that went that high before. And this uses um, I can't remember the chip that's in it. It's a really someone in the chat will obviously know. Um, it's like a really standard um, broadband RF generator chip, and it goes up to that that frequency. Um, and then what they do is they obviously add some filtering and they put software in and all that sort of stuff that you can do all these functionalities with it. Um, which is essentially what is in like a tiny SA, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, Bruce, uh, David's correct. Hundred yeah, percent right, is, Bruce. It is. <laughs> or David Bruce. Uh, yeah. Did you have more slides, Hayden, or, or is this a good time to throw in another kind of topic? No, that's it. Um, maybe we'll we'll go to the next one. So uh, we we talked about a lot of things. We covered a lot of ground. I think at this point, even thirty minutes in. Gosh, guys, we were already like, <laughs> we we already hit everybody with the the technical water hose. What should people expect to spend on some of this stuff? And so I guess let's start at the at the low end, uh, the 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 hobbyist right level, and then you know let's work our way up, and then later on, I think we're going to talk about how you might be able to save on the back end if you're looking for the really good stuff. Yeah, I, I, what I would tell, and I tell everybody this on my channel, and it, like I've got ex- more expensive instruments that I use sometimes, but I do all my videos with the Nano VNA and the Tiny SA because they're approachable, they're affordable. Oh, sure. And the thing is, is that somebody might buy one of those and then use it enough to say, "Hey, I want to buy more uh, equipment or not," and dip their foot in the pool. If you're going to buy a Tiny SA Ultra, which is I wouldn't buy the regular one at this point, just the Ultra is the way to go. You you can get that from the original manufacturer on AliExpress for like one twenty five, one fifty. Oh wow, okay. If you're if you're one of these guys that need to get it Amazon Prime the next day, it's going to be two fifty somewhere right yeah. somewhere right around there. Um, and then I, I would suggest getting a Tiny SA. I mean, sorry, a uh, Nano VNA. Um, there are so many different components and attributes that you can look at in your antenna just with a single port sweep that you get with a traditional SWR power meter. Um, and then when you have the two ports, you can test things like you know, nine to ones, 49 to ones, you band pass filters, high pass filters, low pass filters, band stop, all, all the stuff that you, that you put in line with your transmission line, mm-hmm. you can check, you can, you can test your coaxial cable, um, and see if there's any loss or attenuation. And now you can do it with an SWR meter. Mm-hmm. But um, SWR meters in and of themselves have some it, like I, I've got this one. I think you had this one sitting on your desk, Josh. This is like the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, so I, I, I did a video with um, with uh, Jim from FEP Labs Radio where I, I, I was doing a test with this, and it was telling me my my radio was five, putting five watts out. And so I looked at my power level in my spectrum analyzer, and I was only putting out like three and a half watts. So what I did is I looked at the spurious emissions and added them all up, and it was that extra watt oh. and a half that was, that was coming out. Well, wait, so wait, a lot wait. of times, hey, dive into that a little bit more, right? So, okay, yeah. this is an important point. 
I, I was hoping we would get into this. Okay, so if your radio is dirty and it's got mm-hmm. all these spurs, that means you're putting power out on all those spurs, right? And so what did you do? Yeah. Your testing was what? Say that again. That was awesome. Yeah, well, so it's it's um it's not just the power problem; it's also distortion and signal quality. But so, sure. like on a on a on a meter like this, and it also depends on the filtering inside your meter. You you may get it to tell you, hey, my radio is putting out five watts. But when you take a look at the exact signal and the frequency that you're transmitting on on the spectrum analyzer, mine was only like three and a half watts. And so I started to look at other spurs, and you know, this one was a half of a watt. This one was a third of a watt, and you start to add up all the spurs. And, and the harmonics and stuff that you don't that you don't want to transmit, this doesn't have a way to segment that, right? And so you can see that on the on the spectrum analyzer. So basically, it, well, I wasn't putting out the wattage on the frequency that I thought I was until I did that test. So basically, if your radio is lacking good filtering, they're going we're going to expect they're going to have spurious emissions, and yeah. some of your radio's power is going to be going into transmitting on those 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 uh odd harmonics right yep and if you you have good filtering at least more of that power is going to be on that fundamental frequency the the, the frequency you're intending to be transmitted yeah, is that yeah the because when they build statement? that radio they're testing the output power to give it the, the rating there as advertised and so they, they want it to be five watts but if you have it sliced across the other ones they'll say hey well this this one passed a five watt test you know you break out your 40 dollar meter you test it and you say oh it's five watts but it, but it really <laughs> isn't on your on your desired frequency yeah so in the it's in the case of something like the talk pod which you did the uh the video on Josh yeah. so that ha- so radios will have uh what they call um low pass filters in them so that the frequency which is what your fundamentals on everything below that will be passed but everything above is supposed to be suppressed because you don't you want to notch out those harmonics so with the talk pod what had happened was is most ra- ma- radio manufacturers will, will will have switch in low pass filters because if you um if you were to transmit on say if you if you just had one low pass filter and you had multiple bands then it wouldn't work you'd have to switch them in so if you were to transmit on say VHF uh, it's supposed to pr- suppress everything that's above, say, two meters. It's supposed to suppress the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, etc. With the talk pod, it didn't do that. The only lo- the only low pass filter they had was sort of like UHF and below. So it meant if you transmitted on UHF, so GMRS or seventy centimeters, it would suppress everything above it, which was fine, mm-hmm. but everything below it, it wouldn't. So. Um, yeah, it's 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 kind of varies from radio to radio too, um, and uh, and and we've seen that with some of the ones that we've tested. So big shout out to Dan and SD. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. He says, "Put your power where you're transmitting on." I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, there was a question too, and I, I think we can knock this one out real fast. Uh, let's see. Question: uh, What kit would be needed to determine the run length of a feed line? This is a real easy one. Mm. Yeah, I, I would use an NOVNA. And so what you can do is, I think every uh, half wave on the frequency you're operating on is one trip halfway around the Smith chart. And so uh, you were talking about, or somebody was talking about the service monitor and replacing an NOVNA. I don't know if it does phase and magnitude in Smith charts. So you can see the actual impedance make up or make those adjustments uh, of um, your, your antenna system or transmission line mm-hmm. that you want. But um, it, it would be the nano VNA is, is what I would tell you. We 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 didn't even get into um, TDRs, time domain reflectometer. Uh, no. th- those those you can hook up straight to a piece of coax, and what it does is it sends a signal out, gets reflected back to the to the unit, and then that measures how long it took for that particular um, signal to get to to go up and then back, and then it knows how what the length is. Um, with uh the mfj analyzers they can do very basic feed line length measurements so you can you can use one of those um and the stick can too the stick can as well yeah and and Um, if you get right down to it the stick and the mfj are network vector analyzers at least to a certain degree right so what's fun about that whole thing is if you're uh if you've got a problem with your radio and you're like, boy, you know, let me hook it up to this antenna analyzer. And you're like, well, that's a 100 foot run of coax. And it comes back at 65 feet. All of a sudden you're like, I may have a real physical problem with my coax. Like the, you know, the, the lawn guy cut this thing mm. in half and, and you could be, it'll show you where it's dead, right? Or, you know, where the, the short is, if you will. Yeah. 
and, and well, the other also, thing is you get a velocity factor, right? Yes. And so yeah. yes, that, that's, that's important. Too. Yeah, that's important to some folks. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I mentioned about um, multiple halfway lengths as well. Sometimes you want to measure the electrical length of a piece of coax. So you've got the physical length um, that you can measure, but sometimes you'll need the electrical length for phasing harnesses or for, um, you know, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? The... Um, uh, oh, I can't remember it. But anyway, if you need to measure the electrical length, you can also use uh, an MFJ or a Stick Pro or a Nano VNA to work out with the velocity factor what length it should be for a particular frequency. Uh, filters, sorry, notch filters. Sure. Um, so a quarter wave, a quarter wave at a frequency is an is a notch if you have a piece of coax on a on a T piece. So those kind of things, yeah. Well, let me take a quick break and say a big thank you to the Glam Ham, the Glam Ham over on TikTok. Make sure you go check her out. She's also been on Ham Nation. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. And uh, I, what, what, what do I, I got another one here. Where is it? I saw one from Jason. Why is my chat not updating? There it is. Ch uh, Jason says, Ham Radio 2.0 says, buy Ape a six pack. And so, Ape, what would be your six pack of choice? Make sure we get that in there. So everybody it, would, it would be six, six gold medal winning Miller Lite. <laughs> uh... Hang on a minute. What's six, what's six pack though? Are you talking about six pack down here or are you talking about six pack up there? Yeah, yeah, we're going to fly beer. Ape to Mexico and we're going to get some, <laughs> some cosmetic surgery done yeah. for him. J Jason told me, he goes, he goes, if I see you at Dayton, son, I'm going to have a, I'm gonna, all the Miller Lite you can drink at the, at the at the camp or you show up. And so I did. And I showed up and I'm like, what's up, son? And uh, he had, he gave me one of these perfume smelling beers that tasted like apricots and uh, white chocolate. <laughs> apricots. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm, yeah, I feel like I'm in a bakery instead of a brewery <laughs> drinking these beers that he's got over there. But I love it. Know, I brought my little uh, my two point uh, got uh, the coin uh, yeah. over there. He doesn't re he doesn't know. I actually snuck it back, so it means next time I go over there, he can get me another beer. Oh, so there you go. <laughs> oh interesting. You got him. <laughs> I'll take this moment too, guys. Everybody watching, make sure you click on the link for our Discord. The Discord for the Ham Radio Crash Course. We do an after chat. It happens after this live stream, and there we answer all of your Ham Radio questions live on voice or text. There'll be an after uh, a live stream that follows this one. So some of these guys may hang out. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not gonna put any pressure on him. But uh, all right. I gotta go have my cake. Well, yeah. What time is it where you're at, Hayden? Because he's joining us from uh, Tasmania. Quarter to eleven in the morning. Oh, you got to, well tomorrow. We, we got to at least get you till we got to at least get you to noon so you can have a beer, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going out for lunch as well. So. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, if you can't hang out, I understand. Yeah. But so, you can't you can't drink all day if you don't start early, son. I, <laughs> I mean, how many see? times I got to tell you? See, <laughs> the the apisms we call those. Those are apisms. Right. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't subscribe to Ape, you're going to miss the Apisms. All right, so cost, expending, uh, expecting to spend, we covered the low side. So it starts to, I would say, almost like exponentially start to climb at that point, right? So you can get most things yeah. done with a tiny SA, a nano VNA, possibly a rig expert, you know, if you want to go down that. More form factor for like in the field antenna screwing around yeah. with. What, what would we go from there? sky's the limit <laughs> yeah i mean the, the thing is is like um you can buy old service monitors on ebay and stuff like that the, the problem is is that they were made in the 80s right so you're talking about a 40 year old instrument that may or may not be calibrated may or not work a lot of the times the listings will say you know it powers on or the, you know the lights come on and stuff like that there's there's no guarantee and and they're about 1500 bucks wow um well, yeah, that's so, a very that's a very good point. I, um, if you do end up purchasing something used by that, there are places that will calibrate your device for you. You can send it to them, and they will put a calibration sticker on it. Um, and uh, what is it? Ni is it NIST mm -hmm. National Instruments? Yeah, yeah. NIST, but you yeah. you and this calibrated. But you you want to call them first, yeah, and ask them if they can calibrate that particular piece of equipment. Yeah, and is this where you like slap a kidney on the side of it and say, "Here you go, this is the fee to cover the yeah. cost of this"? Yeah, <laughs> well, the shipping's really what's gonna kill you because mm -hmm. you saw from Hayden's weighing sixty pounds. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you're gonna talk about ground shipping at that point, and you're and you're gonna talk about you know a week and a half of travel to get there. If hit, hit. if you do if you do have um, other hams that you know who have this kind of test equipment, especially if you have two or three, you could have a um a, you could get together and then see uh, measure your equipment against each other's just to see how far out everyone's is and usually if it's if it's all fairly close then you're pretty good but so that's two um, questions then let me ask this so the first one is like in comparison to something like the tiny sa and more of this modern stuff that's coming out versus like an old 
1990s ish, you know, device that somebody's buying off of eBay that's refurbed, you know, how how much difference is the accuracy, and then how much accuracy should a ham really care about, and and what are those tests that they should care about the most when it comes to accuracy, like calibration accuracy, I mean. Yeah, well, um, the thing is, is that like those so there's equipment like that equipment that Hayden has was probably twenty thousand dollars when it was new, right? Um, so yeah. if you look to buy something like that comparable today that's new, you're really, really going to spend a, a, a ton of money on that. Um, you know, I tell people I don't have an is calibrated lab, and I'm just a ham, and I'm having fun, and and for me, like most metrics, I do a lot of metric stuff for work. I'm just looking to establish a baseline and then look at a delta in performance over other pieces of equipment of a similar similar type um, and get that. I, I think probably the things that you want to pay attention to are, are measurements that could damage stuff, right? So that's power levels, SWR and reflect, you know, that coming back and cause you, cause you some grief and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're worried about spurious emissions and stuff like that, like I'm always touting the rules and say, oh, you got to follow the rules. And, and I'm not good with rules, uh, but um so I, I do want pretty accurate measurements when I'm reading for spurs or the leak. Like um, when it, like a lot of companies will say, hey, we want to send you this or we want to send you that. And if it even looks suspect, I'm like, I'm not going to review it because the first thing I'm going to do is put it on the SA. And if it's bad, right. then uh, you know I'm going to have to tell everybody and then you're not going to be happy with me. And so let's just remain friends. Yeah, I, I caught some hell for that talk box video where people are like, why would you even review this? Well, I, I, well, and eight, please dial in on this because you, you have a juxtaposition kind of on where I'm at. I feel like I'm almost obligated to say something so that people at least know, and then they can make an right. educated buying decision. Because if I say nothing, then they're just going to be like, oh, cool, a clear case ham radio. And again, you know, here, here's, here's that bad boy. It's a clear case. All you kids sure. in the 90s, you can't resist this. You can't. Right, it looks cool. You <laughs> can't resist that. There's no way to resist that. Game Boy Color. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> if I don't say something, people are going to go out and buy it and they're going to be like, well, they won't know, right? Because they're not testing. That's one of the reasons why kind of I'm making this video. And, and I'm, thankfully, you guys all hopped on is to just talk about this because it's important, I think. And well, and I, 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 think... I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I, I cop some heat as well for that. But uh, you also got to remember too that not everyone is buying one of these to transmit as well so whilst that's a a, a good test like someone might just use it that that particular radio can receive airband actually quite well and people were saying hey i just bought it for an airband i got no no um sure no idea that i'm going to to use it to transmit but it is handy to do that test and to say to them hey this is what it looks like just in case you know they do ever want to use it to transmit on VHF or whatever because later on down the track they might just be like oh you know i've got this radio and hey it, it TXs and they don't really actually know what frequency they're transmitting on because they've got all these harmonics so and it's no joke you put a receiver next to it and it picks it up and you're like yeah oh on the harmonic but ape go ahead you were going to say something yeah well what i was just going to say is is that um a lot of people don't even care, right? They're like, well, it's only $25 and that's all I got. And I'm going to buy a dirty radio and I'm going to use it and have fun. Okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody for having that mentality or anything like that. For me, I produce videos, right? And I tell people about equipment and I say, oh, you might want to look at this or you might want to look at that. I don't want to recommend something that's not on the up and up, right? And so I'm not going to do it um, unless I unless I say, hey, this, this. And I actually went back and I've removed a bunch of videos where I where I was before I even knew half of this stuff, right? Um, because I want people to say, hey, I got this, I bought this equipment because Ape did a video and I like it and I'm happy with it. I don't. What I don't want is somebody saying that damn dirty ape recommended this and I bought it and uh, you and, damn and dirty apes. Right, because a lot of stuff's expensive, right? <laughs> right. And, and I don't, I don't, and if somebody's telling me that they only have $25 and that's going to make or break them and yeah. they're going to buy a $25 piece of equipment based off my recommendation, I want to tell them the whole story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do you, so, do you want to do a, uh, do you want to do a, a test to show what we're yeah, actually we, talking about? We probably about? should because, God, we're, we already killed like the entire hour. We got like 10 minutes left and there was a whole <laughs> demonstration portion of this. Apes already queued up. So is Hayden. So we might as well, let's do some demos. We got other questions, but you know what? Guys, let me just say really fast. You can go on eBay. You can look up old stuff uh, really quick. Give me two, give me three, your, your most popular brands you should look out for potentially on the used market. Hit that up for people on eBay. Each one of you, go for it. Uh, I'll say uh, three of mine are HP slash Agilent because they're the same or similar company. Oh, okay. Um, IFR is yeah. the other one. 
and uh, Rigo. Okay. R I G O L. Both used and new, kind of what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Motorola, obviously, there's already people in the chat yep. said Motorola. Go ahead, Abe. What, what, what would you be? Yeah. I, well, you look um, for? I would say I- IFR, if I was going to buy older, like a service monitor or HP, is, def- is definitely the way to go for that. The um, IFR is a little smaller, more portable, and stuff like that. If I was buying like new, like I, I sent you a pit, picture. I don't know if you had the ability to pull up, but like my scope's a Regal scope. You got that and, fancy uh, one. Yeah, and I got a, a Siglin Spectrum Analyzer that uh, that I use, and they're they're good prosumer hobby up, upper hobbyist level uh, I can do instruments. That right now, watch this. Boop. There it is. <laughs> there's yep, there's it. there's the ape the ape rig. Oh, I've got that <laughs> shelf. <laughs> This shelf. I, That's the I wanna, shelf. I want to shout out to the Sabenza, the pocket knife that he he just yeah. strategically placed. Th- it's, this it's always in. It's a baller square. baller pocket knife that he's got there. So that's the that's the ape stack, as you'd call it, right? Is that what you yeah. call it? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's do some demos. So, I, I, Hayden, go ahead and take it if you want to share or do what you got to do, and then we'll we'll go to Ape. And then I, you know, I got the tiny essay here. But also, everybody, again, join us on the after chat. You know, I'll, I'll be around. I've got my tiny essay, and we can screw around and show you what like we're talking about here, like dirty so, radios, all that. So, so this is this is just going to be a basic spurious emissions test, which we you can do with a tiny essay. You can do with this service monitor that we've got. So I've got the talk pod, which is you, the clear case your, radio. That you took got. your girlfriend's uh, hair curler and you shoved <laughs> it into the antenna jack, right? That's so, th- so <laughs> yes, I did. So out of the radio, <laughs> this is an atten- This is a through line attenuator because the front end of my service monitor will only accept three Watts. P- please explain radio... that. We didn't hit that point. We should probably explain yeah. that. Do, do, do your, so do your best. The, yeah. the same too with the What's tiny SA as well. You can only input so much power into them. Otherwise you'll blow them up. Okay. So you need an, atten- you need some external attenuation. And then what you do is in your instrument, you go and you offset this because obviously if you're putting power through this, it's going to be reduced. You need to offset it in your menu because otherwise your readings will be wrong. So this is a 20 decibel um, minus 20 dB attenuator. It's good for 50 watts, so we're good there. So this radio is going to transmit through that. And then if I switch over to this screen here, this is my um, – and forgive the green CRT, by the way. Are we playing Oregon Trail here right now? Is that what we're doing <laughs> on the Apple IIe? Yeah. If I go into my config, you'll see here <laughs> RF RF in out minus twenty. So that's where I've got my my um my uh, attenuator offset in there, so that it, it we're good. So that's going straight into the front. And if I actually transmit on the talk pod, you'll see there I've got four point seven odd watts. Um, you can see the FM deviations going up and down as I'm talking. Right. Um, if I change that to hertz, you can see it's about. Dead carry about 20, 20 hertz or something off frequencies, which is not too bad for an FM radio. Um, and with this, with this particular service monitor, I can actually listen to myself and I can hear it. You, you can hear the the feedback going on there. I definitely heard if I, the key up. If there was a key up noise, I heard that. Yeah. So then, if we go to the spectrum analyzer and let's just set our reference level. Um, whoops, reference level. 37 is 5 watts. Right, Ape? There I wasn't go. paying attention. <laughs> so that's your fundamental <laughs> frequency you're transmitting on, right? Yep, that's the fundamental frequency right there. So that's your now, that's the that's the radio reading like what it's transmitting on. Same Yeah, in okay. in in DBM it's it's actually it's slightly out because it's I haven't calibrated anything at the moment, but sure. um you can see a reading there. So that's our fundamental frequency, which we expect to be, you know, to look like that. Now, the second harmonic, which is basically 146,500, which I'm transmitting on multiplied by two. That's that's what it looks like on 293 megahertz. It shouldn't be that high. It should be, there's a, there's a level that the FCC specify that it needs to be below. And it should be at least 40 dB below that uh, fundamental um and 25 micro, less than 25 microwatts. Yeah, so let's make sure everybody understands this point too. So you're you're transmitting on the fundamental frequency, which is the frequency on the radio. But because uh the way radio works is, you know, waves and all that, there are harmonics 
that would be a resonant spot that we're not res wrong word, but the point in which the radio would transmit, it, it's a mathematical equation that will tell you the second, third, fourth, fifth harmonic, etc. almost like ripples in a pool. And so what you were showing was the second harmonic. Was that what that was? Yeah, that's that's the second harmonic on a band. On and and the other thing to be clear too is is this is transmitting on a frequency which is not in an amateur band. Two hundred and ninety right. megahertz is is outside, and it's actually it's only about three dB or four dB lower. So if you're putting out five watts, you're putting out like one and a half watts out on this frequency, which is, you know, pretty high. Um, so at one and a half watts, you were saying? Well, if it's three dB, like it's that. half, right? Yeah. So so, oh, so, if gotcha. so, so, so if you put, if the radio is five Watts at the fundamental, mm -hmm. um, and then the second harmonic is three DB down, then it's two and a half. I think this is about four, four and a half. So it's probably about one, one and a half Watts, something like that. Is that right? Ape? I'm doing my yeah, calculations right. in my head. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that you, you want to do is if we actually have a look at the, um, span, we can actually increase the spectrum. And we can actually look to see if we can see any other dirty spurs as well. So there's the resolution on this is because it's an older piece of equipment, it's a bit harder. But there we go. If we actually go, there we go, 400 megahertz. See how we've got those multiple spurs? Yeah. So the oh, first yeah, one yeah. Is, yeah. So the first one's the fundamental. The second one would be the uh, second harmonic. And then the third one would be the third harmonic and so on and so forth. So here's the big question. Hayden, would a uh, would a good Australian football rules team name, uh, could it be the Dirty Spurs? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's funny because my state's just got a, a football team license to to play in the uh, in the Australian rules football team in, in 2028. And I will mention to them that we should call it the Dirty Spurs. The Dirty Spurs. There yeah. you go. I like it. No one will know what we're talking about. But, nope. Uh... <laughs> nope. But, that's uh, footy. But yeah. That's footy for all you uh, you all right, you right. Americans, right? That's, that's in case you didn't know. That's non uh, non uh, what do you call it? Non padding, non uh, protective helmet. That is uh, footy. that is uh, football for men. I think is what the Australians say, right? Is that yeah? So <laughs> I, that's just that's like that's like a super simple practical demonstration of something. And um, I don't know how much time we've got, but if we do a, I, I don't mind do going a, over. It's up to you guys. And I, I know I, Ape's got some stuff set up. If he wants to hit that, if we got the time, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm I, down. I can go ahead. Ape can go ahead then, because um, I was just going to do a basic receiver test, but. Well, no, we can do right. that. I mean, Ape, do you want to give it a shot? You want to show anything, or you want to set up the receiver test? I'll just do a quick uh, yeah sweep on this. Yeah, let's yeah, do okay, it. that's that's good. Um, so so now I'm in the receiver. Oh wait, um, I think Ape's doing his because his is connected to oh, the computer. Right, right, right. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you're no, ready, you if it. you're ready to go, Hayden, then you do it, and then I'll I'll jump in afterwards. It doesn't matter to me. I, mean, okay. I got some time. Well, so so you can hear that tone at the moment in the speaker. So basically, I'm I'm putting out a, a one kilohertz tone. And thank you, David Bruce, for the super chat. Ape and Hayden in the and same stream. YouTube will never be the same. We've been in streams before. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have. <laughs> but like um, as as a dynamic duo, this is uh, yeah. This is un untreaded ground. I, I don't have it hooked up, but you can see that Synad S I N A D at the top that meter top left of the Oregon Trail. Yeah. Screen. Yes, got it. Yes. So what you would normally do is is you'd hook up the radio to the monitor through the audio jack, and you would you would adjust the amplitude there, which is minus one hundred and fifteen at the moment, until you get that twelve dB on that Synad measurement at the top left, and then you would know how sensitive your receiver is. You know. That's so you're quick, you're dialing back the uh, the audio signal until you're basically losing it on the radio, right? Uh, the RF trying? signal, yes. Yeah. So you can see here if I dial that back and you listen to it, see how it gets noisier. We can't really hear the other side, the the listening side. That that's possibly just your mic. It's not that big a deal. It might it might be just the echo cancellation in Zoom. Oh, but, maybe um, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, that that's basically what you would do. Okay. All right. Uh, Apes probably. Apes. I think you're doing filters, aren't you? Ape? Yeah, and that, that, that my spectrum analyzer doesn't look the normal the way it does on the screen here. So let me now just you do should something. mention you have a a computer connected device, right? What are we What are we looking at? Yeah. So this is my um. It's my Siglent. It is a SSA thirty twenty one spectrum analyzer, and um, what it has is it has USB control. Uh, and some software that you can run. There's uh, 
instruments uh, use this program called NSI to work as like an abstraction layer between your computer and the in the machine for remote control. Um, and what I've done is I set up a tracking generator. So that's why that line is so flat. It goes across there. And so we talked briefly, what a track tracking generator does is it emits a signal at a particular amplitude and frequency um, at a certain level. At the same time, it, it's in, in um, concert with your sweep rate. So if, if your signal that's coming in is at a different speed than your sweep rate, you get goofy measurements and stuff like that. So it's tough to do that if you don't have a built-in tracking generator. And so this, this has one. So what it's doing is that that's a signal that's running all the way from zero hertz all the way up to 2.1 gigahertz. And then um, what I've done is I've normalized it to consider any loss that comes in from my coaxial cable. So what okay. I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the coax that's on there now. Um and I'm going to hook up two pieces of coax that have a uh, filter in it. And this is the filter I always use for demonstration. You can see it right here. It's um, by SDR, RTLSDR.com. And it's just a filter that folks would use if they wanted to block out FM band, right? Which is something oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes we'll, That's serious, yeah. we'll, we'll play radio, radio folk like us. So I'm just putting it in here. So just give me one second. Live demo. And so it should be coming across on the screen and it doesn't look like it. Let me uh let me hit the refresh. Nothing ever works the way you want it to. Oh, of course. Not oh, there's something. So you you can see the uh, a dip that's there, and that's somewhere around hundred um hundred megahertz, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change my center frequency to one hundred megahertz. Okay. And then there I can measure the that particular filter. Now this comes in handy if you build filters. So like I, I built a few of them where I built like um, traps and stuff like that for antennas. And um, so this is what like you for do everybody is, that does field day, you know, band pass filters, <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And so what you can do is you can come in here you can see what frequencies your filter is good for. And then you can also see what they call the roll off frequency. Um, and that's somewhere around three dB. So like you can, you can, Highlight oh, oh, and, and then see, and this then is what a... software gets you right there. You can't do yeah. that on the Oregon Trail screen, right, Hayden? Sadly, yeah. no, no. What's <laughs> uh, by the way, what is this uh instrument and this software again? This software is called Easy Spectrum and it mm -hmm. controls my Siglent. It's a SSA, which is Siglent Spectrum Analyzer. The mm -hmm. model number is 3021X. Um, it, I would if, if I bought it today, I'd probably buy the X plus. But you know, when I bought it, I didn't know so much. I bought it as a learning experience, and I was probably like, "Well, this is probably good enough." But like anything else, when you buy it, you want the next model up, right? What's the rough cost of one of those? Fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, it's not. Um, now you can do this with a tiny SA. I've heard too. Like you can plug it into the computer, but you won't have the same control like you've got here, right? Yeah, well, so the thing is, is that um, you can do this with a nano VNA because it has mm -hmm. two port measurement between, so you would do an S21 oh, sure. measurement. Yeah. Um, but you can do it with a tiny SA, but you need to inject a signal in, like um, Hayden was talking about earlier, um, because it doesn't have a tracking generator, which you would do. What I do is I use, I actually have this little bugger right here, which is just broadband noise, and it just puts out noise across the spectrum. And then what I'll do is I'll go into the tiny SA set a peak hold and an averaging of like 16 sweeps. So I can kind of get a flat line and then I normalize it to get even flatter. Then I hook my um, filter up in series. And then what it'll do is it'll, it'll show me the response and you can do it that way. So you're saying you bought a touch lamp that you're using to feed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Signal into, no, your, into your device. Right. <laughs> uh, but so, so some of the stuff that you can do with, um, we probably don't have time to get into all this with the, with the spectrum analyzer. There's like Hayden was zooming in on a signal. So you can zoom in. And you can see how wide it is, for example. And like uh, the FM uh, wide that we use in amateur radio is 25 kilohertz wide. Um, so you can actually look at that. And you can take a look at how much power is in that 25 kilohertz slice. Um, you want to target around 99% of your power in that. Um, but sometimes you only have like 80 in there. And that means that you're splattering or you're extending it beyond that. And that also comes in pretty handy for measuring things like HF radios, especially some of the more affordable ones. I'll just say it that way. Yeah, because <laughs> right actually, that that's a good point. Abe, because uh, with uh, with my uh, with our setups, you can measure as well for FM. So with these HTs and everything, you can measure uh, deviation because FM when you when you speak, the frequency range varies, and your power or your sorry your channel allocation. That's that's sort yeah. of you know how much how much power you're using in your channel allocation 
So you don't want to sort of be deviating any more than five kilohertz because if you start to get out of that, you'll start to get out of your your you know your nearby um, um, nearby uh, whoever's on the next channel over will start to hear you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so um, they, they they call that yeah. FM deviation, and there it's a percentage of how far your carrier can drift back and forth. And mm. uh, with cheaper radios, that that becomes a bigger problem. Now, if you're just talking on the repeater on the weekend. It's not that big of a deal, but if you were somebody who maybe you hiked up the mountain and you're going to do a two two uh, two meter activation with your Yagi that you packed all the way up there, you might not want that, right? You might want a little bit better radio for that kind of. Or as Josh of. mentioned, uh, field day. If you've got several people who are all on two yeah. meters, and yeah, yeah, you're all next to one another. You don't want to be splattering over onto your neighbor who's like in the tent to, you know. You know, two just, two tents down on twenty five kilohertz. Think of, further just up. think of all the guys who are like they're going to put up a, a multi band Yagi or multi band antenna. They're going to use like a triplexer. You, you still probably have to have band filters on all of that, right? So the, those mm-hmm. band pass filters in the case Ape showing, those are like the that's the the dip, if you will, that where it yeah 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 and hayden just dropped a video or will be dropping a video will be right will be will be yep will be so monday night ham radio guys we're, we're reviving it we're going to be back for for one <laughs> monday night and uh one it, night it, only it, it, no it'll be a thing it, it's just not going to be every week i think it was slightly yeah. killing everybody oh i just noticed hayden's uh sh- show us show us your hoodie there hayden oh because it's winter right. where you're at. It's actually it proper is. winter. So he has so his HRCC hoodie on right now. Thank you. And I appreciate it's, that. It's, it's starting to, yeah, I need don't, to. Don't um, say that. Don't say, no, no, no. no it's, <laughs> it's, my, it's the best, it's my it's the best sweatshirt you've ever owned. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guy, I totally lost track of what I was going to say. Oh, Go you know, Ham, okay. Ham, are they on Ham Tactical? They're on Ham Tactical. Ham Tactical. That's right. Yep. I've heard that's where they're at. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so here's, gosh, where, where did I want to go with this? Um, so let, let's, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this question for you guys. If you had to do this like all over again and you were going to, because you both spent a lot of time in different ways. So that's actually the interesting part about this is Hayden's been active in like higher frequency stuff. That's where a lot of his, you know, his expertise comes from. And a- Ape's kind of been you know, a lot, you know, a broad coverage of what he's been up to. What would you like if you had to do it all over again and somebody's just starting out and they wanted to buy some test equipment? What would you recommend? Like maybe three items or just, you know, tell us what you think. Yeah. Give us the big ape. Thank you for switching it back there. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I would I would tell people. And listen, when I got my my tiny essay, I was super intimidated by the thing and it sat in the box for a long time and I didn't get it out because I was afraid to burn it up or break it and not know what I was doing. Get a tiny SA Ultra and a Nano VNA. You can get the H4s. I got b- both those together could come in around 250 bucks, and you'll learn so much more than you know now, and you'll be able to do a lot more stuff than you would be able to do without them. And you're going to mess up, and you're going to make mistakes, and all that kind of stuff. Um, buy attenuators. Hayden was showing his. Oh you can yeah, attenuators to control. And they're on that. eBay. You can get those yeah. on eBay or Amazon. This is um. Yep. This is a, I got a 40 dB and a 10 dB here. Um, so that gives me 50, 50 dB of attenuation. Or I call this the big ass attenuator. You can get one of these. And, oh, look uh, at that. What's that get you? That's 40 dB, but it's a hundred. It's good for a hundred Watts. Oh, so I can okay. Pump, okay. Uh, so I can, what I can do is I can actually take this and pump a hundred Watts into it and then hook up one of the smaller ones on here and get 80 dB of attenuation. Um, if I want, so like spectrum analyzers listen at a very, very, very low level. So you really want to crunch down your signal. Hey, you know, that that might be a good point to also mention for people, go ahead and answer and we'll come back to Hayden for his recommendation if he's going to, you know, do this again. Uh, is there a particular that, way? I mean, that, that, that would be the two. Yeah, but is there a particular way you set up your attenuators so that, you know, where are they supposed to be in the chain? Is that a, an important thing you should note? Yeah, it, it's going to it's going to depend on the test that you're doing, but um, I hook them up as close as I can to the instrument that's actually doing the measurement, um, and then you just want to make sure some of them are directional, most of them aren't. So you just want to pay attention to that. And then if you have a high powered attenuator, put that first from the from the signal source, because if you put the lower power attenuator in front of the higher power and you put 100 watts in it, you're gonna you could you can burn up the attenuator. Ah, uh, okay, well said. All right, yes, Hayden. What- and- yeah, go for it. Just just further on attenuators before my recommendation. So Ape said that mine's bi-directional as well. So it means that it doesn't matter which way you, you – it's got a fem, N female and an N male here. It doesn't matter which way you put it. 
the signal is is going to go in both directions so you don't need to worry about that but some are directional so they'll only you can only put it in um you can only plug them in one way um the only other thing i'd say is too is don't hook up like 100 feet of coax and then your attenuator <laughs> because sure the extra right. coax is going to be attenuation as well and loss um, is a, a thing right with with yeah. the jumpers and all that that we use right well that's essentially what this is it's basically just a big loss um, ca a calibrated loss uh, um, device, okay. which is used to reduce the power below a certain level, so you don't blow the front end of your uh, equipment up. But uh, the two pieces of, oh, sorry, three pieces of equipment. No, it could be say, it could be as many as you want. I just you know oh, what do you, what would you do? Yeah. I, well, if I was starting out, the very first piece of equipment that I would get is is an is a SWR analyzer or a, or a or a or a rig expert stick or something. Have a play around with that because that'll do the basic stuff that you need. But then um, ab above that, tiny SA and the um, nano VNA, they're the two which are the more. You, you as Ape said, you learn a whole bunch of stuff using those. Um, you can learn, you know, the Smith chart stuff, uh, reactance, impedance capacitance inductance you can learn all of that stuff and you can measure it with these with these uh, devices so um yeah probably those two I, I would say are the most if you get them in most ham shacks because they're they're, they're just so versatile and so handy to have is there a, a certain product that you would recommend like if they you know what uh the well the Obviously, the well, it sounds like the tiny SA Ultra. Um, I need to go and get myself one of those. I've got the <laughs> I've I've got the Nano VNA. Is it the H four, the one with the end connectors? Um, oh no, that I, is the Nano VNA two. The two has the H connector. So that the and H four is the small one with the SMAs. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of them that have the SMAs. This is this is the um, H four. It's so it's got a there's there's you guys in reflection, but it has it has the four inch screen. It's a lot bigger than the yeah. This is this I, is I, the original. This is the original one here in the box. You can see the size difference. Yeah. Um, I typically, th this one's affordable. You know, like the, the, the big one that I was showing earlier is like 700 bucks. Um, you can get this in H for like 125, give or take. Um, that's just the one I, it's going to cover almost everything you're going to want to do in amateur radio. E equipment models. Uh, I mean, I'm biased because of the stuff I've got, but MFJ 259, real basic SWR antenna analyzer. Rig the stick, box. Rig, yeah, rig stick <laughs> five hundred, um, or two thirty, or the lower ones, the the stick ones, if you want. Um, and we didn't even mention the rig experts because they go up the some of those like the uh, the new at Hay Invention AA three thousand, like those things are, you know, um, I think you did a video on them, Josh, and yeah, uh, that they'll they'll do a whole heap of stuff as well. Um, very expensive, but you know they're great. It so rig experts interesting because uh so I, if you had to buy two like well i'm sorry if you're looking between the two the rig expert sticks i would either look at the 500 or the the pro and really mm. it's just going to come down to like do you like an e-ink display or do you want that cool color display for my mm. money frankly i like the e-ink display outside in the sun if you're like using mm. it in the field that's the one I go to, and I think you actually save a couple of bucks if you go with the 500. By the way, yeah. there's a link in the description for Giga Parts. If you use the hashtag or the the, the tag Josh, you get 10% off of that if you're thinking about it. And, and they'll both connect to a PC as well. They that, will. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they will do that over USB-C. But uh, mm. the new one that came out, the TAN one, uh, it, it is higher frequency, but th there's only like it only it only gets you like one amateur radio band because it doesn't take you to 1.2 gigahertz which would no. kind of be the next actually 1.2 gigahertz is is down here anyway is actually a pretty commonly used band i would say more than like 900 megahertz which is amateur radio mm. uh and that and that would cover that if you know if they just bumped it a little bit um so buy the right thing for you really take your time with this kind of stuff uh and, the, and you guys feel free to jump in test equipment is one of those things that's like you really should take your time to understand what you need and what you don't need a lot of people just go out and buy a lot of stuff and then they're like you know what the hell do i do with all this yeah it, it, I, I was gonna say you gotta have a I, purpose for it and this is why i mentioned well, yeah. in the description like clubs like clubs should watch this video because clubs should buy this stuff like this is something that mm. a ham radio club should really dive into this is a space mm. that like that they need a geek squad in in, in ham radio clubs right. to revive ham radio clubs. Those are the people that should be buying this stuff. From my point of view, what do you guys think? 
Yeah, well, so like, um, like I'll see where people buy a, a Ready Expert twelve hundred. Just using an example, um, seven hundred dollar SWR meter, and they go out in the field and they just and they check SWR and that's it, right? And maybe they're going to grow into it, but maybe not. But there's a lot cheaper. Like you could take a lot of that money and put it into your radio or to your better sure. coax or to your to your antenna and just get a regular SWR meter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need to spend that kind of money unless you are going to be operating on those frequencies and you do want to do some more of that heavier lifting uh, type analysis or testing and stuff like that. It's easy to go broke buying test gear that you're not going to ever use. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, and and to, I'd also to say though, that when you are looking at your equipment, you might want to future proof yourself for something that you mm-hmm. want to delve into later. So for instance, if you want to investigate some of the higher bands, um, then you might it might be worth investing a little bit more money in getting that particular meter. Um, but if you've got no interest in it and you just want to measure SWR on an HF antenna, then there's no point getting a you know top of the line um, unit if it's you know it'll do what you want it to do, but it's overkill for what you want. Um, and uh, with the um, with the with some of the other stuff too, we mentioned uh, Ape mentioned about when he got his tiny SA, how he was you know a bit intimidated by it. Um, have a look here on YouTube because there are so many tutorials on how to use stuff. Um, the Nano V and A, the Tiny SA, all this kind of stuff. Ape's got heaps of videos on it. And um, if you want to, if you want to, if if you're intimidated and you're not sure how they're going to operate, then just look up those videos first before you buy. Find the equipment that that they're using, and then you then you'll be you know more um, informed when you go and purchase the gear on how to actually use it. I like it. Very good. Gentlemen, do you have anything you want to mention before we wrap up? Reminder, links are in the description to all these fine people. If you if you liked anything you're talk that they were talking about, go subscribe to them because you're gonna get a lot more of that. So Ape will go with you first. You want to mention anything? I know I already started with you, you but no, I'm, come up with something I'm special, good. fun. Uh, Ape, <laughs> you know, if, it, it, PO Box is good if you want to ship a Miller uh, Miller Lite. <laughs> <laughs> ship me ship Miller Lite. That, that would be much appreciated. Um, n- nothing too excited. Just working on some stuff. I maybe I'll just give a quick yeah, man. Yeah, man. I did yeah, a, man. I did a I did a build video. This is a um, our Mercury. I'm sorry, our Aries. It's the nine to one uh, Cartena. It might be hard to see here, but no, we got it. Uh, I did. This is a little bit of a custom build, uh, buddy of mine, and I'll tell everybody who it is. Don Izzo. It's for Don Izzo. Um, so I made the element and the counterpoise two separate colors so he doesn't mix them up. But uh, I threw some dog <laughs> bones on here and did a couple other stuff. Um, I did a video on this if you want to check them out and see them. Uh, really nice antenna from six to forty. Uh, you got to use a tuner with a nine to one, so don't get upset. But um, most everybody has a tuner anyway. But, I love uh, the winder on the car antenna. It's my favorite part of that whole kit is that winder is. Well, we, we spent a lot of time figuring out how we're going to do this and then getting it made. Uh, we yeah. use a pot, we use a nylon um, injection. It's not injection molding, but it's like, they, they, it's like a powder that they spray into a mold. Um, but it's, when you when you look at it, it doesn't feel it's not a three D print. It doesn't it feel cheap. Feels, like a 3D it print. feels solid. Like it feels yeah. really, really like a good piece of kit you can take out in the field. I, I loved yeah, it. So I love your kit. Your kit's great. Coffee and ham radios, Thank guys. You. Coffee and ham radios. So that's yes. another I, I should add the link. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I, should no worries, I should add the link. I should add the link for them as well because they deserve the credit too. Uh Hayden, what do you want to mention, man? You got something coming up? Anything fun? Yeah. Uh well, the first thing is is I'm about thirty five subscribers away from 37,000 uh, 37,000 okay 3, everybody 000. get them there can we do that and, and, right. th- and 3035 subscribers away from 40,000 so there you go um so uh yeah um, well, well calm down a- calm down <laughs> <laughs> if you want to give me a birthday present um, oh well that's so, yeah. right wait 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 this is literally hayden's birthday he is doing yeah. this live stream on, on his hold on, birthday hold on. hold on today is sunday here which yeah. is my birthday. Oh. It's Saturday where you guys are. Okay. So yeah. my brain hurts with time. <laughs> Technically, we're time. On the for you. It, where where Hayden is right now, where he is live, it is his birthday. So everybody wish Hayden a happy birthday. Literally decided to come live and, and be on the show. Hayden, continue. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I interrupted um, you. So, yeah, Monday Night Ham Radio. So this is a bandpass filter for two meters, which um, is really shiny. Uh, picked up from HRO, so you can get these from HRO. Oh, there's me. Oh, look at that. Um, oh, it's so shiny. So shiny. It is. It is so shiny. Shiny and, and chrome. So uh, so this this will help for for any interference that you receive on two meters, but I go into that in the video anyway. 
Um, we use that and then I've got, repeater. So I'm going to be using that on the repeater, yes, because it's at a broadcast um, broadcast site with lots of FM transmitters and stuff that cause interference. Um, and then I've got some other videos coming. I've got I've got a I still haven't even unpacked my Yaesu FT five D uh, yet, which I got at a handvention and. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and the rig stick and a couple of other radios. So I've got some reviews coming and some stuff. I just need to find some time to do them. But, uh, but yeah, I've got that coming. And um, thanks for having us on, Josh. It's it's good to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, Ape and I usually talk on Discord all the time about, you know, all this <laughs> gear and stuff. And uh, and it'd be good to get a few more people involved in chatting around it. So, um, yeah, yeah for sure. good. it's good. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. And uh, shout out to CH because he has apparently been subscribing to me before the Ham Radio Crash Course. He misses the Hosh Nasi videos when I was like ranting in my car and all that fun stuff that I did bring it like, back. 10 years ago. Bring, uh, bring it back. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, that means a lot. Uh, man, so many things going on. God, there's so many things going on. Uh, I, I just am so thankful that you all wanted to hop on the screen. Oh. Ch, <laughs> he sent a he sent a super chat. I missed the Hosh Nasi <laughs> vlog. Still a great show. Oh, the vlogs. Yeah, I won't be vlogging for a while. The the kids pretty much put a kibosh on the the vlogging world. Once you have kids, man, your your whole life changes. The the oldest wants stop. to be in the after chat. Go ahead, go ahead. Did you say, say uh, it doesn't did... stop? My my kids are in their twenty and twenty two, and uh, they're still just as much effort as they were when <laughs> when they were like eight and nine. But See, the thing is, is YouTube's brought back the oldest video search so that you can still go back and watch some of Josh's old don't, vlogs. Don't go back to my old videos. Don't, <laughs> don't go back. Don't go back. <laughs> I've been back and watched. They're quite entertaining. <laughs> they're, they're different. They're totally different they than are. what we do now, for sure. Like, yeah. totally different. Well, I, I appreciate you guys for being on the show. It, it really means a lot. And I, I, I think we, we, we put some information out there. I think we help some people, maybe even possibly. Um, so, uh, I, you know, you tell us in the comments what you guys uh, all think. And I appreciate all the feedback we got. There was some good questions in there. Uh, again, we're going to go to the after chat. I will at least be going to the after chat. These folks, they're all human beings. They've got things to do, particularly Hayden in Tasmania. He's got to go have right. a birthday celebration. Yeah. So <laughs> if we end up on the live stream, I'll be there for sure. But, you know, I'll, I'll try to do my be the best I can with the tiny essay and I'll show you how it works uh, if you have questions. Anyway, thank you both gentlemen. Again, the links are in the description. Um, go please subscribe. Thanks. Hayden is only thank you very 30, much. 30 subscribers, right? 30 subscribers. Uh, hold on. I'll do a uh, Oh, we're doing a refresh. I was surprised. Uh, 25, 25. No, this is when you say, no, it's actually 100. Josh. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> hey, who who just unsubscribed? <laughs> no, no, it's about 25 to go. Uh, so CH sent another super chat to say this might be a weird callback. Remember the one who sent you some smoked fish? My bad, man. Ha ha ha. Our first videos are all Thank like you. Ape used to do Ape used to do cider. And that's fan that's a fantastic video, by the way, isn't it, Ape? Yeah, uh, I took I took it down because it was just, I, it, it was getting recommended to everybody. I used yeah. to do all, all all I, kinds of videos. I did a lot of mead back in the day. Like I was, yeah, mead was my jam. I loved, I loved making mead. And David Linux is a dog. Thank you, thank you, there, Labrador Retriever. Thank you very much for the super chat. I think Appreciate David Linux is chat. uh is a patron of mine too, I, a yeah. recent patron. So thank you. Appreciate you, man. All right, everybody. I'll say bye to these gentlemen, and uh, hopefully we catch up with you soon. Thank you for being on the chat, Smoking Ape. First time. I bring you. We'll bring you back again. I promise. <laughs> That sounds great. Thank you, man. Appreciate I, it, man. I appreciate it, guys. So if you want to hang out in the Zoom or if you got the time, hop on over to the Discord and we'll talk to you in a little bit, all right? Is this the same Zoom that you use for the other? I guess yeah, I got live, other hashtag now. live dash stream. And you can just dive on over there and people will already be lining up and I'll flip this whole thing around for the live stream in like 10 minutes and be live again. All right, because I, I got to go make water. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> proper proper call it to the stand. Who likes who likes Stephen King? Also one of my favorite apisms. <laughs> so appreciate you guys. Take it easy. See ya. All right. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah. All right. I, I had a great time. This was a lot of fun. I, I cannot I cannot tell you how much I enjoy just bringing people onto the stream that are much smarter than me. Hayden's obviously done that a few times. Ape has is, is brought in a whole new flavor of like understanding cool test equipment and all that stuff. I just I just love being able to ask like little questions that that I have that I'm sitting there going like, "Oh yes. 
I do, I do want all this stuff. I do want to buy these things. And he's literally going to spend like $250 on my money if I do Amazon Prime versus going uh, over one of the Chinese services. But guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to throw you over to the memes. My kid already wants to be on the after chat. So I will say 73. Take it easy. Yay. Hello. Daddy. Yeah, hop down. Hop down. We're not done with the live yet. What? What? It's a tricorder. It's a book. No, tricorder. No, it's a book. It's a book. You're trying to buy a book on Amazon about Star Trek's tricorders. No, we can't go to Target after the live stream. Good night, everybody. See ya.